Anita Bieberg, and I'm the CEO of Seva Exchange Corporation. Seva means volunteer in Sanskrit. Oh, it's not working. <laughs> Save Exchange is tapping in to an underserved 410 billion plus market, and that's only in the US, by the way. We have many unfair advantages that I'll tell you about, and we plan to make an aggressive play in the volunteer economy and emerge as a leader. Uh, the person uh, in our team is made of amazing individuals. I know everybody says this, but this person is actually going to be nominated for a Nobel Peace Prize soon. So he really is amazing. Uh, oh, there he is. Um, his name is Dr. Edgar Kahn. He is the inventor of time banking, which I'll get, to get into just in a moment. And he's a civil rights leader. He worked for uh, President Johnson. He was a speechwriter for Robert F. Kennedy. Uh, and he is, I mean, there's a small story behind it. If we had time, I will go over it some more. Um, so he's, a, he's still practicing law in Washington, D.C. He's 84 years old and still, still going strong. So he founded the nonprofit TimeBanks.org in 1995. And we are a spin-off of it, but we're for-profit. So the rest of the members of our team, uh, I wanted to give a shout out to Dr. Gia, uh, Carol, rather, C Carol Shu, right over there. She uh, left Consensus recently. She's a research scientist. Uh, she's, I gave her the title of Chief Evangelist because she's amazing at everything, so I really didn't know what to put her in. <laughs> so she can choose what she likes to do. Uh, our CTO is Deepak Ramachandran. His name is too long to fit on there. Um, he actually had an, an exit from his previous company. Uh, he ran a outsourcing firm called Source End, which I think most of the apps that Apple and all the big tech companies have used, uh, software applications, were probably done by his company. So he's pretty amazing. And the other uh, folks have decades of experience in their domain. Okay, let's move on. So what exactly is time banking? Uh, so within a trusted community, every hour you volunteer, uh, you can earn a time credit that is redeemable for an hour of help. Now, how do you say that's possible? So people join our platform. It could be an organization like a, a church. A church is a great example. Any of you go to church? No judgments here. Okay. <laughs> if you don't, <laughs> no judgments either way. Um, let's say your church decides to use our platform. So your church would give coins to you, these, these crypto coins that are only worth time. You're not, don't, we don't want you hoarding this because it's not going to be worth any more than it is when you get it. So you, you can work at your church, help, I don't know, do a bake sale or maybe build some benches or whatever it is. And then the church will give you these tokens that you can then redeem amongst the rest of the church members. So clear as mud? No? Okay. So another way what you can do is, hey, a lot of people say, I like to volunteer for the sake of volunteering because it makes me feel good. And I'll say, great. Then you could donate those credits to someone else in far need of you. So what, we, what we're doing is then doubling your volunteering impact. So we connect, motivate, and retain valuable volunteers for community-centric organizations. And we do this by providing an innovative volunteer management platform using AI, blockchain, and the time banking principles that I talked about. So our SavaX platform algorithmically matches volunteers' passions to the immediate needs of others. So just this is from 2017, the data for the US. Nonprofits took in over $410 billion, and it's, it was up. 5% from the previous year, and it's already 2019, so it's probably up another 10%, 5%, 5%. So they managed 63 million volunteer workers, and they paid $102 billion in administrative costs just to do so. We guesstimate that about at least $11 billion was spent on volunteer retention and recruitment efforts. If you think about the, uh, the cost of uh, training a volunteer, uh, background checks. Imagine if it was a for-profit and you get an employee and you train them and then you know and you pay for the background checks and then the next day they quit. Would that be a good business model? No, right? But this is the same, that's what's happening with nonprofits. 
So this is the problem, right? Volunteer managers struggle to retain volunteers. Each year, 21 million volunteers go poof because they're bored, frustrated, or they feel disconnected. Plus, volunteer managers lack actionable data to solve this problem, which then causes organizations to spend billions of dollars backfilling or rehiring. So our SaveX platform reduces churn costs by at least 35%, and we do this again through the algorithmic skills to needs matching and by offering these time banking credits. We call them Save Coins. So we cut churn and generate more volunteer hours, all while saving organizations a ton of money. So our SaveX platform also helps recruit more volunteers because we connect three volunteer sectors within the general volunteer population. First of all, what we're doing is we already have time banking communities throughout the world, and you will be impressed by this. There are, I'm working with uh, communities in 97 countries who want our platform, okay? Get this, 97 countries. Um, it's about 1,500 communities, and give or take, I mean, the smallest might only be 50, but the bigger ones have 1,000 plus, okay? Um, so our time bank communities can now increase the volunteer pool. So we're gonna approach nonprofits here uh, that need these volunteers and we'll start with our own pool of volunteers and we're gonna connect with corporations that wanna encourage employees to volunteer and they can now incentivize them other than like Google that gives $15. You know, sometimes they might give you one volunteer day. So we're connecting them with the nonprofits that we're getting who are getting the volunteers from our time banking communities um, plus the employees, if they want to volunteer, is another, um, you know, infused pool of volunteers. So this is just a product view. What do volunteers see? In our app, volunteers can create a profile, list their strongest skills and interests. Maybe it's not their skill, but they're interested. And general availability and discreetly list what they need help with. This is important because sometimes, think about it, how many of you, when, you're in, when you are asked to help and volunteer, raise your hand here, would you volunteer if someone's asking you, please, we really need your help? Most of you would do it? Yes. But how many of you would shout out to the rooftops when you are in need of something? Okay, maybe only one, okay? But what are you guys thinking of that guy? Loser, dude, really, he needed to say that? So we wanted to make it discreet. We did not want it, if you're a church, right, you're, you're community members and you need help with something, you can even put it discreet. So we're using that AI to just match you to the person that can give you that, okay? No one else has to know. I mean, you, you don't have to put that, it's just for those like, you know, people like the rest of them except you, of course. <laughs> so. So our business model is we have, uh, so we sell subscriptions to our platform with three different um, ad admin le level capabilities to allow for low entry pricing for communities, you know, that can't afford it. We're trying to help those struggling communities, all the way up to high margin enterprise offerings to corporations and very large nonprofits. Uh, I mean, it's, it's basically $2 per user per month. It's, it's very little, but that the user doesn't pay for it. The volunteer, anyone can download it. It's free to them. It's the organization. Great, one, one question about that. Will, will um, well, well, two questions really. Will, will you have a public bank that everyone can participate in? Anyone, you know, uh, anyone out there can just join? Uh, you mean a virtual one? No, 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 no. Uh, a platform that's just open to the public. Yes, it is open to the public. So okay. when you register, you can come through an organization or you could just be a volunteer. Oh, we do okay. encourage you, obviously, to belong to a community because if you're trading for babysitting and you don't know these people, I highly wouldn't recommend it. We want you to join a community. I mean, that's the whole purpose of time making. Okay, yeah. so, mm -hmm. so then the time earned can be spent, it's, it's not bound within an organization or within no, a platform? No, it's all within Save Us Platform, and that's why so many um, time-making organizations have joined us, because previously they were all in silos, and no one could talk to each other. By using blockchain, nobody owns the data, that's why they like it, it's decentralized. Okay. And now this coin, you can um, volunteer at your church, go to Ghana and volunteer over there, earn credits, come back, or you could use it there in Ghana, and say, hey, give me a tour of your your land. Great. Last, yeah. last question. Mm -hmm. Will you allow the platform operators to sell time? Uh, that, what do you mean by sell? Because it's not... Where someone can come into the platform and purchase time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. The, what happens is the organizations can buy them. 
we have to be very careful. We do not want organizations like small business or even any companies to buy them to give to employees that should be as you know as tokens because that's slave labor. We want to we we have to like legally stipulate mm -hmm. this is meant for volunteering and not to cheat your employees <laughs> of income. So, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So have you looked at the bartering market? Yes. And what is different about this versus bartering okay. market? First of all, legally, at least in the US, uh, bartering is completely taxable. But there are three legal cases that have already happened because our time banking organization has existed for 25 years that have proven that the intent of time banking is in to, to encourage and recruit more volunteers. And you are, um, it, you're only, it's, it's time. It's purely time. You're trading one hour for another hour. They cannot tax it. Now that might change if this, if I end up mainstreaming this, it's very possible that the government can hand that down. So we're actually even doing a preemptive strike. Edgar Khan is heading to Capitol Hill, um, showing the case already that he uh, wrote up in Capitol Hill saying, we want to keep this a sacred space. And we got Andrew Yang, by the way. Uh, he's a good friend of ours. He wrote about time banking in chapter 18 of his book. He is also going to help us if he becomes president. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that'd be nice. Anything else? Uh, Editors? Well, Anything? Um, for an organization such as a church that you mentioned, right? Yeah. Uh, what, what's your definition of a user? Uh, a user would be... So we have two types of uh, methods when we do charge people. A user would be the, the members of the church that are actually staffed there. Um, but, if, but if it's a time banking community, it's going to be all the church members. They would be the users in that case. But if it's like a company, like a corporation, it's the employees. If it's nonprofits are a little iffy, so we're, we're going to charge them slightly differently. It's not just by um, how many people, because we have so many clients who come to us every week. I don't do anything marketing. And I'm getting them, and they're like, oh, we only have like zero employees, and it's just volunteers, so is ours free? So I, I get that asked, that question. So because of that, we are actually working on, based on how many coins they need, because we, we it, each subscription model, and it's very long. If you want to find, I have a very, very, if, if you have a second, hold on. It's all uh, tier-based of how many people and how much it costs and things like that. Um, we, we will charge more if you end up using like thousands and thousands of volunteers and you only have, say you have one employee. So, I mean, we have to be careful with that, yeah. Anything else? Our revenue projections. Yeah. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> oh, you, I thought it was going to be. You have, uh, <laughs> you, uh, how, how many users does 2.3 million in revenue uh, represent for you? Or how much? I, I wrote it, I had activity it in the. activity is that? How I, many? I had that in the other slot. I, I guess maybe not users, but how many? Um, it's right here. We were, for the first year at least. Okay. Um, can you read that? The. So yeah, we tried, we're trying to get 5,000 organizations by 2020. And I mean, the way things are going on a, like I said, <laughs> we, we, we haven't even launched yet. And once we <laughs> launch, and we'll obviously put in some marketing, but we were in a Freakonomics radio um, interview with Andrew Yang a few months ago. And since then, I mean, more interviews have come, but that's just nonprofits, even the ones that are just thinking of starting up, they're like, we need this. We need volunteers. How do we get this? This is, and then uh, we're actually working with a nonprofit called FIRST. They do robotics uh, competitions, and they're national. Say they want to do a beta test in New York, and they told me exactly what I was talking about. They spend so much money training their volunteers, and, and, and that's their biggest problem. The, they train them, and they do it once, and judge you know one competition, and they're gone. So they're like, please help us. So what we do is we are motivating, actually motivating people to volunteer. Well, you didn't let me finish this one. So we have four powerful motivators. Obviously, the re uh, we incentivize and motivate volunteers through impact validation, skills mastery, rewards, again, by, oops, by way of time credits and gamification techniques, like earning badge levels. So one example I can tell you about uh, validation is I taught, um, in my kids' school, I teach ceramics. Okay, I was actually volunteered for it, didn't know anything about it. Um, but I've been doing it for seven years, and I you know it went from, okay, a mild interest, to now I'm pretty good at it. 
So if I got matched suddenly to somebody in a, um, a kid in a hospital, they have leukemia and it's, it's the holidays, they just want to do something for their mom and dad. So I get matched to that kid, I come to the hospital, bring my hand building clay and all that, and teach the kid to make some mug or pot or something, and take it back, you know, uh, fire it up and bring it back, glaze it. Um, how awesome am I going, is that, first of all, that kid is going to be super grateful, right? But how awesome am I going to feel if I, if I get a chance to volunteer again? I'm creating impact. I just changed this kid's life and their parents, right? And I mean, it was nothing to me. I'm already passionate about it. So what we want to do and change in this country, or not this country, the world right now, is spend more time doing the things you're passionate about, right? And, to, and help others with it. And then the things you're not so passionate about, in my case, maybe reorganizing my garage, I bet you somebody else is more passionate about it. And they can do it. So you're basically getting your time back. Who doesn't want their time back? Right? So anyways, that's all. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah.